Hello friends and family and welcome to the August 6th, Thursday, August 6th edition of the uh, Crippling Anxiety Meditation Conversation. Today I wanted to talk about a story from this past summer. I uh, met a fellow who bought some property near the property that I own with some friends uh, in Nova Scotia. He's a nice guy, uh, he and his wife. Um, and for some reason, I think it was because he saw us on bicycles all the time. Um, the conversation was far more politically focused than I would have wanted with uh, who is this person is essentially a stranger to me, um, a new acquaintance. I don't really want to talk politics with such a person, but um, there was always that sort of bent. And one day we went for a run, and at the end of the run, uh, it was a long run, I think it was 19 kilometers or something, um, we stopped where they were staying and got some water. And um, at some point in the conversation, while we were having a bottle of water with them, they, he brought up this idea um, that there should be no restrictions on freedom. <laughs> of course, this is um, familiar to anyone who is uh, aware of Reddit brand libertarianism or um, any of these sort of new age political and philosophical doctrines um, that, uh, that perhaps propose that there are solutions to current set of problems that democracy may or may not have. And uh, he, he, he seemed to feel really strongly about this position. So I told him, yeah, well, you know what? You would love India <laughs> because you don't have to drive on the right side of the road. You don't really have to follow the laws at all. Uh, the laws are kind of just there on paper, but um, they don't necessarily apply to you. You can find out which ones do and which ones don't. And his reaction to that was, of course, oh, well, people will find ways to behave in a civilized manner. Uh, over time, it comes naturally, and there's this um, sort of implicit idea um, that behaving in a civilized way or what he perceived to be a civilized way uh, was an okay imposition, um, an okay restriction on freedom as long as it was implicit. <laughs> um, and I, I think that we, we tend to philosophize about the idea of freedom uh, a lot and we we everyone does this everyone wonders about free will and how much free will do I have and how much actual freedom do I have how much freedom is restricted by social norms or laws or uh, the behavior of others because if you want to cross a border there's really there's nothing that prevents you from doing that except maybe a border guard or a law that um, might put you in jail when you get to the other side of the border. If you want to drive on the wrong side of the street, there's nothing that prevents you from doing that. Your impulse will probably prevent you from doing that, um, which means that you've been conditioned in such a way that you don't want to drive on the wrong side of the road, I hope. Um, but most of the aspects of our lives are like this, right? Um, the, when we wake up, the way we're supposed to behave, the way we're supposed to speak, the way we're supposed to interact with other people is largely conditioned. We're not generally behaving in accordance with the laws. Most of us are not that familiar with the laws of our own native country, much less all the countries that we might visit. Um, so there is a, a largely unscripted conditioning of all of us that prevents us from behaving in ways that get us thrown in jail. 
prevents us from behaving in ways that get us looked at in ways that we don't like or talked to in ways that we don't like. Um, and I'll, I'll throw one more example, a kind of counter example. Uh, a friend of a friend um, mentioned, uh, and it was in a little blog post he had, it was a back and forth between the two of them, uh, the fellow I know and the fellow I don't. The fellow I don't had moved to Japan and jaywalked and the police stopped him and he was not appalled exactly, but definitely shocked. He was hugely surprised that the police would bother him for walking across the street when there were no cars. And so they said, oh, you, you can't do this here in Japan. Sorry, please don't do that. And he said, oh, okay, I didn't know. I'm sorry, I won't do it anymore. But he was very surprised by this and he was very surprised by a number of things in Japan. And these sorts of structures um, between someone who grew up in a country like India and someone who grew up in a country like Japan certainly um, will have mismatches like this. But the idea of freedom that I'm interested in today is this idea of not necessarily free will, but our own individual freedom. How much freedom do we have? Do we think we have? And how easy is it to apply? And meditation gives us a sort of, um, in the software industry, we think of, we often call uh, a play space a sandbox for obvious reasons. Um, and you use the sandbox to experiment and to try out new things. And this is kind of a game that you can play with yourself. Um, and it's a very natural part of meditation that you can say to yourself, oh, okay, how much freedom do I really have? Can I set a goal for myself intellectually, consciously, and then achieve that goal? And it's not a very complicated goal. It's, you're not saying I'm going to be the CEO of such and such a company. I'm going to run an ultra marathon. You're not setting an impossible goal. The goal is generally to put all your awareness on your breath, to be aware of your breath without getting distracted. Um, and you say to yourself, oh, okay, consciously, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to follow the breath. And that's your level of freedom dictates your ability to do that. And your level of, let's say, imprisonment dictates the restrictions around your ability to do that. And so if your mind is wandering um, to anything, right? Uh, if your mind is wandering to something that feels very important, if you said in the first place, this is the most important, this is what I'm going to do, follow the breath, and then your mind goes somewhere else, if your mind convinces you that this thing is more important, whatever it is, taxes or what I'm going to do today, this is more important now, you've lost the game. Um, you're out of the sandbox, essentially. You've jumped out and you've started doing something else. Um, I'm just kidding. The sandbox is, is always there. You're always within the confines of the sandbox. Um, there are other situations that are more difficult. So if my knee starts to ache and my body starts getting involved and it tells my mind, this is more important. The knee is hurting. Pay attention to the knee. Um, and if I agree, I've again lost the game. So my attention was on the breath, and now it's on the knee. Oh, the knee is very important. I must pay attention to the knee, pay attention to the knee. Um, and this is our responsiveness, our reactiveness to pain, which I mean is a pretty natural one, but it's still there. It's something we didn't set out to do initially. We didn't sit down and say, I will pay attention to the breath unless there's some discomfort, and then I'll pay attention to that instead. So these distractions are 
small prisons, tiny prisons, um, which restrict our freedom. Our freedom is our ability to do whatever we set ourselves to do consciously. And this idea of the prison, and the prison of the mind, is uh, fairly well explored in a documentary that was done quite a few years ago. Um, the name of the documentary is Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. It's about uh, prisoners um, sitting Vipassana courses in prison in India. Um, there are Vipassana courses run in other prisons now in India and the US. Um, for political reasons, the prison in the documentary is currently shut down. Uh, hopefully it will um, open, open back up in the future. But um, the idea is that we can't think of a physical prison more serious than prison, actual prison. Um, and these prisoners are, uh, some of them are only jailed. They're only awaiting trial. They haven't been con uh, fully um, uh, convicted and prosecuted of anything yet. Um, they are in prison and it is arguably one of the worst prisons in India, which makes it pretty bad, pretty uncomfortable. And so this is their sandbox, an opportunity to take a 10-day Vipassana course and see how imprisoned are they by their own thoughts, by their own impulses, their own reactions. And it's interesting to see, and it's interesting to see the consequences for those prisoners. Uh, it's interesting to see their relationship to their jailers, who are also uh, Vipassana meditators, um, at the end of the course, and, and what it means between them because they're, on, they're in very different positions in life, on the mundane level, on the physical level. One of them is very free, and one of them is very, very imprisoned <laughs> in a terrible Indian prison, um, in the case of any one of these relationships. And this idea that we are a prisoner of our own mind is um, very applicable right now. Our prison, our physical prison, is much more comfortable than uh, an actual prison in India or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and we can leave on occasion, uh, but we are stuck at home and we have to deal with this physical situation. And meditation, be it anapana or vipassana, is a tool for dealing with that situation, um, much in the same way that it is for these prisoners who are physically imprisoned uh, in the documentary. So I will link to that video. Uh, it's about an hour long. Um, give it a shot if you want. It's not more important than meditating 10 minutes of on upon yourself today, but if you have time, uh, feel free to watch it. It's a pretty good documentary. Um, and it will give you a glimpse of some of the uh, consequences of Vipassana meditation for these prisoners who are trying it for the first time. Uh, I didn't mention before, but I've shifted in this room. I've moved to the other side, traded spots with the bed <laughs> um, to get a little more sunlight, although not when I record these videos, then everything's closed up for your benefit. Uh, I hope you are all taking care of yourselves and taking care of your families and everyone around you, wherever you are. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Good night.